Welcome back to Talking Lead. This is episode 39, and we are here in the Talking Lead quarters surrounded by packing stuff because we're getting ready for a big event. That's right. We're, and we're not uh, anywhere near being ready. No, not even close. <laughs> we don't know if we're going to have our vehicles ready or not. Did you do anything cool this week with uh, firearms left hand? Well, other than uh, us getting ready for this, um, this, can we talk about it now? Are yes. We, are we going to be cool to talk about yep, it? Okay, I so to the today. YouTube shootout with the Iraqi vet. Was it 8888? 8888. Um, down there in Georgia. Moss uh, Pond. We were very uh, very uh, gracious to get a invitation from them. So thank yep. you guys. We appreciate that. Looking forward to coming down there and seeing what all... Uh, I don't know what to expect. I don't either. I know there's going to be a bunch of full auto weapons and all kinds of So do cool we need stuff. to take our own guns? Or? I'm going to take a couple. I'm not going to take a whole lot. I'm going to take my Glock 19. I may take my Remington 700. Or the Benelli Novo. I'm only going to take one of the long guns. Well, I, you know, from our from our YouTube experience there, people know I can't shoot a shotgun worth of flips. So <laughs> I'll probably leave the shoddy at home and uh, just bring a couple of ARs and my new acquisition. I know. I see that. Uh, I just picked up a Sig Sauer 1911 Nightmare. That's a pretty gun. It is. It's pretty sweet. I just happened across that, so it wasn't anything I was planning on doing. Uh, so yeah, I'll take that down there too, and we'll get some, Have uh, some test with time that, with that. Yeah. So, what'd you do with guns this week? What did I do with guns this week? Um, nothing <laughs> at all. I took a guncation. Guncation? I guess I didn't purposefully do it, but you know, I, I've been crazy. Yeah, busy we know with Biden's work. been calling you and talking to you. On the phone. <laughs> I've, no, I've been crazy busy with uh, work and. Uh, just trying to get caught up on a bunch of stuff there because I knew I was going to be off tomorrow and Saturday. Son, this is your work. Shoot. This is your job. This will be my job when we get paid. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun, though. We Sometime enjoy down the road, it will happen. We'll get there. As usual, it is the last Thursday of the month. Which means? Gabby on guns. So we asked Gabby, do you want to just do our whole show with us? The short, abbreviated <laughs> show. Gabby, how's it going? Very good. How are you guys? Good. Thank you so much for joining us for the whole show this time. No, all the time, all the time. You know, you can count on me. It's... And I always love to talk about guns. So. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Did you do anything cool with guns this week? Well, I always around guns and doing stuff with guns so yes i did i, I wasn't actually in houston giving classes yeah you were in that funny that funny town what's the name of it we, we couldn't pronounce it oh brazoria yeah, yeah. Bra- brazoria brazoria <laughs> i kept calling brazoria. it brazoria and, and and the funny thing is that you know <laughs> houston and and that area of texas is very dry uh, I'm sorry, humid. There's no rain most of the time. At, you know, at this time of the year. Sure. Guess what? The two days of my classes, it was rainy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I saw your Facebook pages where you had the tarp <laughs> down on the ground and everything. Uh, well, then all the, went, all the farmers everybody, down there should thank you then. Yeah, they were like, wow, Gabby, you brought the rain from Florida. I was like, great. <laughs> <laughs> so you're their new rain god. You, you need yeah, to start charging, much. like, before you make a trip there, say, call all the farmers and say, look, it's going to be a couple hundred bucks for me to come visit. You will get rain. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> so how did it How did it go? Were you able to hold the class? Yes, definitely. It was very challenging because the first class in the morning, it was, it was not only the rain, it was the wind. You know, it, and it was an outdoor range. We have sort of um, overhead, but the wind was pushing the water everywhere and every, so everybody was getting wet and all that so i said you know what we really have to get to an enclosed area so i did like 70 80 percent of my class in dry fire and oh, wow. it was you know what it is giving a shooting class it's just dry fire and yet delivering a lot of knowledge that everybody was like okay gabby even if we didn't have a chance to shoot because they did we we did some shooting when the rain kind of sees a little bit mm-hmm. at the end but they were just having a blast because i had to improve uh improvise all the knowledge i could do to fulfill three hours of training of not shooting so that oh, wow. was a good test of your training ability wasn't it it was you know those are the things that i always say in life that you know it was a it was it was difficult 
uh, I was talking like a parrot, <laughs> left <laughs> and <A> right. Parrot. <laughs> But um, but that kind of led me, you know, it, it was like a test. Now, what did you, you mean know? you were talking like a parrot? <laughs> having, to re- having to repeat everything? Well, yes, because, you know, when you, when you don't have live rounds, it's pretty much repeating. Um, and, and the interesting thing is that I really had a chance to make them do the technique Perfectly, over and over and over again until they were like, wow, I got it. <laughs> and without even putting a bullet down range. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's kind of the key before you even do that is you got to get the, the technique and the form down. So that was probably to their benefit, wasn't it? It was. It was. And, you know, we, we work a lot of draw from holster and mag changes. But, um, you know, trying to, we, it, it was like a comfort, it was like a, a very good feedback between me teaching them and then uh, asking me questions. That sometimes when you give a class and you have everybody shooting and at the same time, people don't have that time to ask all the, the questions that they have. So it ended up being pretty good. It was, I, I, they enjoyed it a lot. I, I, I enjoyed it, but man, that talk about hard work. Hit it, Arlie. Hey, Ralph, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon of the Week, so brace yourself, baby. This week's Jack Wagon of the Week, going on the Jack Wagon train, is somebody who I always liked before. I thought she was very funny. Yeah, but you always knew she teetered on the... Sarah Silverman has created a video. We call it the, uh, um, oh, what's his name? Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey style video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, basically bashing the NRA for what she calls, I guess, a lame attempt at bringing different cultures in. and they Basically did, calling them racist. Yeah, and so they did a black, the black NRA video, and it was pretty tasteless, classless. It was more racist than anything that she could have ever claimed it that was. was going on. It so, really was. Anyway, Sarah Silverman, welcome to the Jack Wagon Train. So what do you have going on right now, Gabby? Well, yeah, there are great, you know, great things right now. But um, one of the things that I'm very proud to to say is that in a shot show, you know, what is a shot show? Is the greatest firearm industry? Yeah, coming event. up in January. Yeah. Exactly. So in Las Vegas. Um, I'm, I'm going to be uh, talking with uh, a very group, an amazing group of women. It's going to be uh, a panel of discussion about marketing to women. So we're going to be ta- I'm going to be there with Julie Gallup, Barbara Baird, uh, Linda Powell, Kate Kruger, Susie Huntington, and Randy Rogers, which most of us are competitors. Some other are very um, involved in the industry. And what we want to do is pretty much educate the the dealers, the gun shops, how to approach women in the gun shop, how to promote but not deviating their, you know, their goal. Because at the end, this is a male-dominated sport, but now there's like a, that wave of women getting into the gun shops, asking questions, and sometimes they get, you know, that stop sign and mm-hmm. <laughs> the yeah, in the front door. Whether it's the, the, the people working in the gun shop, the guys are not, you not know, respectful. Super nice. yeah. yeah. Yes. And also the way it should, I want to say the way it should be, but a way how the gun shop can improve their, even their sales. Mm-hmm. You know, women are completely different. You guys can go left and right and you won't pay attention on details. <laughs> we do. <laughs> that sometimes gets us in trouble. <laughs> So is this like a um, an organized panel? I mean, is this like the NRA is putting this together and you guys are going to brainstorm and come up with some um, some good policies that's going to be put in place or, or what's, what's going to happen? No. This is actually uh, organized by the National Shooting Sport Foundation. Okay. So they call, you know, all these great women and they call me, which I feel honored to be part of it. And they say, you know what, let's do like a seminar. Let's do a seminar, a short seminar. So they can go to the um, National Shooting Sports Foundation, all the dealers. They obviously are going to get a chance to 
to hear from us as a woman, as a shooters, as a competitors. And uh, we have great ideas for, for all the dealers. And um, it's not very expensive at all. It's like I think it's like $35 entry per, per shop or per dealer mm-hmm. that, um, you know, they can they have to be registered in order to attend. Right. But I think they're going to get a lot of information that is needed. It. Will they come out with some sort of a certificate or something like that that they can hang on their door that says, you know, women friendly or something along those lines? <laughs> <laughs> women friendly. No, no, we, we don't have, we, we're not going to hand out any, any type yeah. of Well, that would be a good thing to promote your program with these dealers is, you know, have a little course that they go through. Uh, and that they have to pass, and then once they get certified, then they could have, you know, this certification that they could, you know, hang in their shop or on their door or something like that. Uh, well, actually, it would help promote great... promote and bring awareness to your uh, to that program. Yeah, that, that that's a great idea, something I will definitely pass along. That's this yours. It's free. You can have that. <laughs> <laughs> From you, me to you, you. Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> but um, th- this is the first time we're gonna, the first year we're gonna do this, and the whole idea that is that we do this every year. I'll, as always, it's gonna be very much um, a test, and mm-hmm. you know, trying to put a good, a good, uh, and that's what we're working on, trying to put a, a very nice, you know, a lot of information. Yeah. And, and you know, the the gun shop sometimes you go in, especially me. People get impressed. It's just when they I start handling a firearm. But before that, some people if they don't know me, they just kind of okay. What is it this girl wants? You know, it's kind of uncomfortable uh, position. I don't care because I used to work in a gun shop, so I'm used to it. But I put myself into some some other women's shoes that they are not much. Uh, familiarized with the industry, but mm-hmm. they're trying to get into it. And and I haven't noticed it much around the gun shops here in our area, but mm-hmm. I do know what you're talking about, and I know that it you know it does exist, and, and it's more of a discrimination is what it is. Well, and then you get the 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 man. The first thing they say is, "Oh, well, you don't want a 45. You can't handle that. Here's a little uh, 38 special <laughs> revolver." Mm-hmm. Or they start talking to the husband and yeah. not the wife with the pink handle. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> And dir- yeah, exactly. directly go to the pink section uh, of the cabinet. <laughs> yeah, e- exactly. And and you know what? Uh, I'm a, I'm a woman, but at the same time, I don't put all. I think women also are guilty. We are guilty. Some of some of the women are guilty for that position because, especially when you and that's what something I tell my my students. You're getting into a male dominated sport, so it's not enough with. Oh, I know how to shoot my gun. No, get to know more about your gun. Get to know the parts of your firearm so you are more knowledgeable. And when somebody talks to you, you can actually have a good feedback. And they say, oh, wow, this woman knows what she's talking about. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's just like what we talked about with you last time on the show is you got to take ownership and you've got to own you know, your responsibility to, to learn the firearm and learn the responsibility of that. And, and obviously that obviously that they'll give the women all the respect. With that said, mm-hmm. men in the industry and the ones that work in the gun shop need to have um, a more understanding of what is that a woman that goes to a gun shop is looking for yeah. without you know pushing too much what he thinks. Yep. So, but uh, I think it's going to be a, a great um, a great opportunity for dealers to to that are going to the shot show to come by and hear um, all of us speak and give them a lot of ideas. We're going to be talking about um, uh, training employees, uh, hiring more women, and so on and so forth. So it's yeah, going to be a it's great going to be a segment. good good panel. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. To never stop, and your wheels are always turning, aren't they? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I consider myself a businesswoman. <laughs> you're, you're, you fit every definition of that. We've had a, a new segment that we've been doing off and on, kind of um, celebrating celebrities or people in the media in general that uh, are pro-gun. And, and do it in a responsible manner. Right. And we uh-huh. are going to talk about one that you've had an interaction you, with? Yeah, you've got a, a connection with, with um, Manny Pacquiao, is that correct? Oh! Uh- Yes. Tell us about that. (laughs) You know, I have a good, uh, 
you know, a great group of followers in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And a couple, they won two of my t-shirts because I was doing a contest and they won a t-shirt. So sure enough, last week I received a picture and she said, Gabby, look who is with me in this picture and I'm wearing your shirt. And what I saw was Manny Pacquiao and they were telling me that Manny, um, he hosts every year a USPSA competition and the price is not when you win, it's not a, um, a, a medal or a regular, um, how do you call it? Award? Yeah, it's not necessarily that like that. It's cash. Oh, wow. So every, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Manny. Go, Manny. <laughs> so I was like, wow, super nice. I thought that was great. I never thought that, um, maybe because I didn't look for it, but... Um, the Manny Pacquiao would be so active, and apparently he is very, very active. Yeah. Into for those who don't know, shooting. Manny Pacquiao is um, a world class. Is he welterweight or featherweight boxer? It's one of the smaller I ones. <laughs> I know he's tiny. Yeah, but, he, but he's a he's a. I read an article powerhouse. Once, I read an article once where proportion to his body weight. He punches harder than any other boxer in history. Now, of course, if you got punched by Mike Tyson versus Manny Pacquiao, Mike Tyson's going to hurt worse, but proportionally. Yeah, pound for pound. Right. As he, they say in the boxing world. He's the world. hardest puncher in, yeah. in the and world. And he's still active. He's still an active yeah. boxer. And I, and I actually posted a video. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. I posted it on my Facebook page. And uh, it was like a small article. Or mm -hmm. where he was saying that what he really likes, what he really likes about shooting is that it's a sport that requires a lot of discipline, concentration, visualization. So it was very yeah. interesting having hand eye boxer. coordination. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And having a boxer, somebody at that level of you know discipline, uh, acknowledging that they are a sport, it could be as important and as great as any other. You know, yeah, and I think the video was was it the video where he was wearing like a polo shirt and he had like uh, plaid shorts or he was and he was going shooting the uh, the uh, contest. Yeah, he, there's a video I posted that he is actually shooting. It's actually an old video. I don't think it it, it, oh, okay. it assembles this particular competition. But he was talking about that how he actually got involved and he pretty much I would say fell in love because I can say that. Uh, that he did, but at least how he liked it is because of that so much concentration, mm -hmm. dedication, and discipline. Well, did you see his gun he had too, the custom made one with the boxing glove grips? Really? Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a really nice I mean it's probably a ten thousand dollar gun. And let, and let me tell you he can afford this it. guy <laughs> this guy, yeah. Manny Pacquiao He's definitely an athlete on you know, at any level you can ever imagine. Oh, on that video gosh, yes. I'm talking about, he you see him shooting, and he in the video he says he had been practicing for a month before that was taken, mm -hmm. and I was actually impressed how fast and how much control he had of the firearm and technique and movement, map changes and all that I was like, wow, I can't even imagine how many hours he has been practicing only for one month. Yeah. Well, it probably comes natural to him too. You know, he is naturally quick and he's got that natural hand-eye coordination too. So it probably was a good fit for him to begin with. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And, and he's, and I say what is it? Impressive would say the discipline. I just can't e imagine if he says something. I just even imagine him saying, "Oh, I want to be." If he wants to be the world champion in shooting, I'm sure he can achieve it because that man is has discipline, <laughs> and that's something that shooting requires. Shooting requires a lot of discipline, a lot of drive, fire, and training. Well, you know, we've had you on uh, before, and we've asked you. At the time, was our standard five questions that we asked? It was three. Was it three? Yeah. 
She didn't get off. Yeah, we're up to six now, Gabby. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. So we're going to hit you with the new question. You know what's hilarious? (laughs) If, Uh like, somebody at, like, the level of, you know, the top radio interviewer or something heard heard that, oh, you're only asking, we're up to six questions. We're up to six now. They're probably like, uh, yeah, all right, good job, guys. You got a whole six (laughs) questions. You are cute. (laughs) And it's the same one for everybody. (laughs) So the first of the new ones is, is there a gun or has there ever been a gun in your arsenal that there's a little bitty part of you that's ashamed of owning or, or, or was just embarrassed to say you owned it? None. None. <laughs> okay. And then for that one, we've got the backup question is, is there or has there, well, not is there, has there. Is there a gun that you've ever owned that you wished you had back? Oh, I don't sell guns. I keep them all. Oh, wow. <laughs> you don't you don't trade them or anything? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> and that's something I always I always say. I always keep my guns. My uh, my fiance he buys and sells guns. I don't. I just keep them. Uh, if I'm going to buy something new, I'll just get a new one, but I always keep my guns. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we've got a question to answer that one for you. Well, then, in that case, yeah. what is your, next on your bucket list of guns? What's the next gun you just you can't got to have? Get? Yeah. Well, I've been thinking of getting a shotgun, maybe a Benelli M4. That's right. been one of the, my thoughts because I wanted to getting to three gun mm-hmm. and the other pistol, uh, the other firearm that I have been thinking on getting is the, uh, Tom Foglio or Ooh. what is also called here, uh, EEA, uh, which is similar also to the CZ mm-hmm. just because, yeah, I know which one you're talking uh, about. Uh huh. Just because it has a, it has a very nice small grip. But those have been my two guns that have been like, hmm. Now, is there something you know, custom you'd like to do to the tank folio? Well, yeah, trigger job. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. For competition, definitely. That would do some trigger job. And I don't think if I would um, do any Sarah code or anything like that on my guns. All my guns are black. I really like them like that. Okay. Um, the only guns I really like kind of uh, silver will be a 1911 two-tone you know, you ought to check out like. this uh, Sig Sauer uh, Nightmare uh-huh. 1911. Uh-huh. It's it's got kind of a, a two tone kind of thing going to it, but it's black. But just the uh, like the trigger, the hammer, uh, mm-hmm. you know, some of the screws are there's, stainless. There's another one which is the uh, the Springfield. I don't know if they make it anymore. Which is all the sides of the gun are polished you know, silver polish, uh-huh. uh, stainless steel color. But all the all the top and bottoms is black. Okay. And and the serrations are black too. Yeah. Let, That's kind of the way this SIG is. Um Oh, okay. It, it's I'll send, oh, yeah. I'll send you a picture of it. But yeah, those I had never seen done. one before and I I ran across it, uh this guy that had it the other day and I mean I just fell in love with it. So I had to get mm-hmm. it. I had to make it mine. <laughs> well Nothing wrong with having another gun. <laughs> no, never. Not at all. You know, my excuse is I'm going to do a review on it. So yeah, that, it's a business expense. It's a business expense. <laughs> uh, I understand that. I understand. The same thing I say with ammo. It's just I'm, you know, sponsoring. I'm sponsoring myself. Yeah, so I have to yeah. Get more ammo. It's a tax write-off. <laughs> tax write-off. Exactly. The government have a heart attack and see ammo on a, <laughs> a tax, a tax write-off. write-off. I'm sure. Mm. Man. But they're going to get it, because yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm like I you. Have... When I get a gun, I I rarely will get rid of one. I mean, if I get it, it's one that I've been wanting. And, you know, it, it, it would have to be a very good reason for me to to get rid of it. So I'm like you. Well, pretty much, I'm, pre- I'm pretty much the same mentality um but i always said i don't know why since since i came to the u.s maybe because in venezuela you are so limited here i'm not so limited so i'm like why would i want to sell my guns yeah (laughs) i just keep them all (laughs) you you're a hoarder aren't you (laughs) we ought to start a new show called gun hoarders that's a good idea when it comes to guns 
Hey, I'm always fascinated, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have one of those. I always post, not I wouldn't say always, but I really like to look about gun rooms, you mm -hmm. know, and, and very nice closets for yeah. guns and such. I really, that's something I really envision. I did a video yesterday, <laughs> uh, a video review of one of our listeners uh, custom ordered a safe. And I mean, he had all this stuff done to it that I'd you know never heard of before. But it was like uh, seventy two inches tall, it's fifty inches wide, uh, twenty eight wow. inches deep, and it weighs four thousand pounds. Ooh, he got wow. he got extra metal insert plates. Uh, he got extra fire protection put in it. He had a wine cabinet put in it also. <laughs> <laughs> What's he, the rule about mixing he, alcohol and guns? <laughs> uh, well, he had a whole separate container. It was different wood in it because he had yeah. it all lined in cedar. I mean, it smelled great. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And the door itself weighed, I think it was 2,000 pounds, and he had 10 stainless steel rods, yeah. three on top, three on the bottom, and then whether it be four and four on each side. Uh, I mean, it was just amazing. Wow. <laughs> so. I did a little yeah, review of that. We're going to post to our YouTube channel. It's funny because, uh, you know, I, I talk to my fiancé and we say, most of the time the guys, they say, oh, this is the man room. But in this case, they also like guns. So I tell him, we can't call it the man room, <laughs> you know. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what, whenever we're going to call it, a room with guns and the safe. And call the it Gabby's reloading. room. By the way, I don't know if I told you guys, I'm going to start reloading. I have... Almost all the equipment. The only thing I'm waiting for is the powder. All right. Oh, nice. So I can start getting my 300 blackouts from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I, did I mention do I, did I mention that I have an AR-15 300 blackout? No. Did you just get that? No. Well, it's, I say it's mine. It's actually my fiance. But I told him, all your guns are mine. My guns are mine. What? <laughs> which, Wait a minute. What's his is yours and what's yours is yours. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 did he get? What's he got? Um, I don't I don't remember the brand to tell the truth. I have to look it up in the safe. But um, okay. yeah, we have a three hundred. I actually have a video shooting the three hundred blackout on on YouTube. Nice. That well, thing is pretty cool. I'm still in the hunt for one. I I still haven't acquired my first three hundred, but uh, mm -hmm. still got our fingers crossed. That that's yeah, going to happen. Well, you know, it's the funny thing is that before uh, we got it be because the ammo, it was pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. Now, it's expensive. Because you can't like, find man. it. Exactly. Not only that, um, as far as I know, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's the same process as a 223, isn't it? The 5.56, five, it's a neck down 5.56. Five, five, yeah. Exactly. So, just imagine right now, five, five, six as it is, it's getting so difficult to get. Well, so the not in our area. Mm -hmm. it, it's becoming but, pretty uh, plentiful nowadays. It'll catch back up. Um, what? We're going to have an influx of listeners coming and buying all our ammo in Tennessee. <laughs> That's okay. I can assure you. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> is, that <laughs> is that the theme music we have? When you arrive at the, the, the uh, gun shop? <laughs> That's your new intro music. Well, okay, here's what we're going to stray from the norm a little bit. And we're going to splice in an interview we did with Tim from the Military Arms Channel when we were down at the Iraq Veteran 8888 YouTube Range Day. If it sounds a little bit weird, it's because we are inside of my FJ Cruiser doing like a mobile studio kind of thing but the cool thing is we've got some really neat background noise uh i.e full auto weapons and maybe some little explosions too so hope you enjoy it now we got tim from the military arms channel on youtube he's part of this big youtube range day 2013 how's it going man good man good seeing awesome. you guys out here yeah it's been a blast so far there's been literally a, and figuratively i was gonna say are, are we trying to be uh you know kind of witty <laughs> I, there or no yeah yeah i was yeah, I, it is a blast we yeah, like wit was, on this show so it, feel it's free very witty show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so you came down from up north right you're a yankee kind of sort well, of yeah i live in lanky uh, lanky lanky i'm lanky wow. too i'm 64 <laughs> I, I i live in uh, yankee territory but uh i'm southern at heart gotcha i come down here for the sweet tea so you represent the southerners up there yeah just for the sweet keep, tea that's it 
But you'll drive. Well, and my rebel flag gets kind of ratty in the wind. I got to come down and pick up a new one. But other than that, yeah. <laughs> hey, we had some good sweet tea for lunch. Did you get some of that? I did. Actually, I went back really for seconds. Good. Yeah, it was good. Tasty. Because we get we have sweet tea up north, but it's from McDonald's. It's the only people that have it. Now, how did you originally get into firearms? Well, I was born when I was very young. And, uh, <laughs> no, I, that's a, you know, we were too. Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. We may be I brothers. I don't think I was yeah. born. No, you're okay, very I was, young I was, once, but I don't think I was ever born. It's genetically engineered. I, uh, you know, I, it's, it's kind of funny. I, I don't know the first time I really fired a firearm, but I remember, um, a guy named Jerry was, uh, was dating my mom and, uh, he was, he was, uh, a cowboy out in, uh, this is Missouri on a little farm and he had a little 22 and I went out and he said, you know, shoot that penny off a tree, and I said I can't, and kept pushing me, pushing me, pushing me until I hit that darn penny. He didn't challenge you at all, did he? So I'm like, oh hey, this gosh. is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And so he left me with a 22, and then uh, nobody else in my family was into guns, and and so I, I think I was, I had a couple of 22s, like a Ruger 1022 stuff like that through high school. Then my junior year, I convinced my mom to buy me a 22 rifle. Uh huh. I said, Mom, it's a 22. Please let me have this new 22. And she's like, Okay, well, why does it cost $540? 1986 numbers. <laughs> and uh, I was like, Well, Mom, you know, it's, it's just a really nice 22. It was 223, is what I wasn't telling her. Uh, Technically, it's a 22. It is. It's, it's a 22. Still. I didn't lie to my mother. Even back in those days, okay. that's high for a 22. Yeah. yeah, it was. 540 bucks would be. But it was yeah, a 223. Pretty, pretty pricey. Yeah. That, but that so explains it. We head over to a, a gun dealer who dealt out of his house in the 80s. That was pretty common practice. You know, everybody had an FFL. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so we went over to his house, picked it up. His name was Bob McCall, and he was also a KU professor. And uh, she said, open that box. I want to see what's inside. I said, no, let's wait till we get home, Mom. <laughs> no, I want to see. I just paid $550 for it. Open up that box, and she said, you are not having that rifle. I said, but, Mom, we already paid for it. We <laughs> it's can't a 22. No. Okay, but you're never taking it out the house unless I give you permission. <laughs> Next weekend, bye, Mom. Over to my shoulder with the AR-15, out with my friends. And <laughs> That's awesome. I still have that rifle, but, yeah. So. Really? Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice. I do. So tell us about your military or law enforcement background. If you have any. If you have any. Ooh. Well, see, guys, I uh, I can't talk about that because... No, I'm just kidding. Super secret. <laughs> Super, secret. Super secret. It's not secret. even in my DD-214. <laughs> but, um, no, actually, I joined the Marines when I was in high school. Um, joined 0311 and got lucky somehow. They were going through looking for people to uh, to guard nuclear weapons back during the Cold War. I'm 45 oh, wow. years old. You were the man for the job. Huh? I guess so. They were just going through screening people. I guess they had a couple of openings. <laughs> so I signed up to be 0311 and go overseas and see some things, and I wound up not seeing much of anything but Washington State Oh wow! at a naval submarine base guarding nuclear weapons for the Trident Nuclear Submarine Program. But I was part of a Marine Corps uh, Security Force company, which evolved into fast companies. Uh, we, we did a lot of tactical stuff, guarded the weapons, and had to do room clearing drills and stuff like that. So it, it was fun which also kind of solidified my interest in firearms sure. in military firearms and so when i got out went to school for um, administration of justice thought i was going to be a cop but then uh eh, i thought you know what there's more money to be made in the internet yeah so kind of kind of went that direction yeah the internet has uh, worked well for you so far it's done okay yeah yeah, yeah. you've got how many subscribers now uh two or three and then uh mostly family members no million. i think i think we've I'm got like six six well so you're doing better than me <laughs> <laughs> i should be interviewing you um no, I, I think, uh, what, 100, 150,000 yeah. subscribers last right count. There. Doing pretty awesome. good. Awesome. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? I've had the channel since 2008 and didn't really start taking it seriously until about three years ago. If you would have seen some of my early videos, I probably mm -hmm. wouldn't be in here doing this interview. Really? I think I want nothing to do with this guy. <laughs> yeah. But um, because we had the fun, you know, we would stage uh, accidental discharges, make fake videos, and like, you know, sure. tripping with guns, and we thought we were funny. Yeah. And so did other people because I got a lot of attention. But uh, <laughs> I've, I've since long erased all those videos, and I can't believe I'm saying this in a public forum. So and, and now you I've are. I've just lost all credibility, so. Yeah, that's you, you have officially become Stick in the Mud Man. Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> See, a lot of people actually accuse me of that, being uh, <laughs> being pretty pretty dry and too serious, and they have no idea. You know now. No, now I know now. You've seen. Yeah. yeah. And so. I've enjoyed your channel. That's why. When I first met you, I didn't know if you could tell, but I was kind of standoffish. I was like, this guy's like straight laced. Yeah. He didn't, I didn't want to joke. And then all of a sudden, we sit down at McDonald's, he starts cracking jokes. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. And then you really knew when I took a picture of you at a urinal. Yes, like, that kind of really kind of <laughs> was that you that did took that? us. Okay. That was me. Yeah, that was yeah, him. Nice. Yeah, and it went Classy. public on Twitter. Yeah, so. we, we tweeted Oh, and it. Instagram. So. And Instagram, yeah. yeah so that might guys... just be the push we needed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that why we got all those sub subscribers last Maybe night? Maybe that's We need to. Take urinal pictures more often. <laughs> yeah, it works well. When it comes to pop culture, mm -hmm. movies, video games, TV, music, whatever, anything that relates to firearms, what is your go-to? What's your favorite? For a long time, uh, you know, AR-15s, obviously, and then, uh, I don't know, six, six years ago, maybe, I, I went over to the AK. 
uh, AK seventy four. That's not a movie or TV show or pop culture. Said guns. Pop culture. That's when it related comes to, to guns. pop culture, that's guns related culture. to guns. That's okay. He was distracted okay, so like, by the man in the window there. <laughs> yeah, there was okay. a man in the window. I, <laughs> there was a man in the window. He was getting ready to draw. <laughs> I was nervous. Yeah, and, and, and radios. <laughs> Microphones make me nervous, not cameras. No. So anyway. Um, Especially big fuzzy pop ones. Pop culture. What movie do I like? Movie, TV show, video game, okay. music, video, whatever. Sure. That TV, involves fire. TV shows, I guess I'm kind of addicted to Homeland right now. I've been oh. watching a lot of that. Pretty good stuff. I, I, has it started again yet? Well, I watch it on iTunes, so I'm, I'm a season Yeah, five. see, that's what we do. Yeah, I'm, I'm season two. Yeah, the last one. I didn't like the way it ended, but anyways, no. but then, I'm not going to tell you. Then, I'm, then I'm, I'm glued to it. i got to figure out what's going on. And, yeah. yeah. It gets really weird season two. I'm not going to do any spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm like, okay. But um, then, uh, of course, I, I'm a big sci-fi geek. I, uh, I can't gotcha. help it. You know, grew up in the Star Wars era. You like I, Falling Skies? That's what I was going to say, Falling Skies. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Love Falling Skies, man. What a great show. Oh, yeah. And I didn't even know anything about it. And We, were, we usually ask this question to everybody, and we had a listener send an email saying hey you got to check out falling sky so of course my wife and i i think it was on itunes yeah we go on there and we're watching it we're like oh my gosh and within a weekend we watched the entire first season yep and now we're we can't wait for the next season to come out and then what about zombies Walking yes, Dead. Well, absolutely, Dead. it's yeah. coming up. Oh, play on words. No, we didn't. Yeah. We did not. They sold this is here. absolutely original. <laughs> <laughs> but we are still trying to get on Talking Dead as Talking Lead. And, and they do a little gun talk. Well, we hadn't really got any response yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just gun guys. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> probably like the neighbors here at the property where we're at. Uh, we, first thing we want to tell them is when you put a scope on a rifle, make sure it's not backwards in yeah. the filming of the show. So that's how'd, happened twice now. How do you, how do you get a job uh, doing these Hollywood videos and, and being the, the, the guy that's saying, okay, this is a rifle you're going to use. This is a, the site you're going to use. Yep. How do you get that job? Because whoever they're hiring... Sucks. Needs to go back to school. Yes. Yeah, it's just really Some bad. Do, I think they do it on purpose, though. Maybe yeah. they do. I think they do it just to you know have that little thing. For gun guys. Yeah. yeah. It's like, watch this, guys. To tweak us and then get us posting on their Facebook page. and then, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. We're helping them. <laughs> we got to stop that. We can't help Hollywood. So is there or has there ever been a <laughs> firearm in your collection that you're just a little bit of you maybe is ashamed to say that you own? Oh, that pink Walther P-22? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, no, you came um, up with that quick. Yeah, I know. You're was, not too ashamed of it. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I don't have one of those. But my wife wants one. I don't know if she wants pink, but she wants purple or something. She saw somebody with a purple one. It's yeah, but I don't have they one make yet. all kinds of colors now. Yeah. I, I, I guess I'm not into that. It, Although I think I've said it before on the show, that guy that I was at uh, one of the local gun stores, Mm. And he was carrying a pink revolver. Big, burly guy yeah, yeah, yeah. in a pink revolver. And he's a man. And I asked him, I was like, dude, is that a pink revolver? He goes, yeah. And when I pull it on somebody in a firefight, that split second that the guy goes, is that a pink? Boom. <laughs> <He's> a, <laughs> it takes a man to wear a pink shirt and carry a pink gun. I wear, I've wear, i yeah. pink shirts. I well, will admit man. it. Just just with a beard. Everybody has the their beard own strategy. The, yeah, it's first sign. Yeah. yeah. A man yeah, without a beard is not a man. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take him seriously. What was it you said earlier? Oh, we have a name for people without beards. Yes. Women. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> What's next on your bucket list of guns you want? Holy cow, man. Here's the bad thing is uh, I'm probably backed up six, seven months. I have built some shelving in my office just to take care of all the stuff I have sitting around. I have a few videos. Oh, on. wow. Um, you know, I got a the Lionheart LH9 pistol coming up. Uh-huh. It's a... Um, nice. It's a, it's yes. a cool we got one coming, too? Yeah. We've got, we should have three coming, one of each. Do we really? Oh, well, they're supposed Sweet. to be. That's what they said. <laughs> yeah, that that's coming up. I it's a neat pistol, and yeah. um, I, I really enjoy it. Now those guns have been on the market once before. Mm-hmm. They were the DP fifty one. The di- or Daewoo. Daewoo. Daewoo makes them. Daewoo. Yeah, and it's been in service with the South Korean Army since well about twenty years now. Oh, so wow. it's not a new handgun. Now they've done a little redesign to it, haven't they? Yeah, the and the LH- coating's different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has sure. Cerakote coating. You can get it with night sights. It's definitely a. Uh, uh, an, an upgraded version that they're bringing in now because yeah. the original DP 51s were just you know parkerized military grade handguns mm-hmm. and they sold them really cheap they're like 350 400 bucks back then wow so they've gone to, gone up a couple hundred bucks but the quality of the finish and the options you can get now is really gone is the well. uh, sure. the you know there's there's single action double action which they call it um, uh, triple action the they've yeah they got an, another name for it yeah um that wasn't original to the to the day we was. Is that something that they they've added since, or is that all? No, the original K five had that. It's it had that all the time. That. Yeah, and what what you're talking about is when you cock the hammer back, you can push the hammer forward with right. your thumb, and it's that really light double action first right. shot. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. yeah, they've had that since the beginning. That's the next one up. All the firearms that you've owned in in your life, mm-hmm. is there one that you'd like to have back? 
that you no longer have? There's probably a hundred of them. Yeah, what's the uh, top? So I went through this period in my life where I, I kind of started selling off my guns. I, I yeah. thought I was done shooting. Wow. Um, Why? Yeah, it was just before what I started happened? off with the YouTube channel. Were you depressed? No, I wasn't depressed, but I, I, I had a lot of guns in my collection. Just It was like this, but I, you know, it's like, do I buy another gun safe or I like, start to thin the herd a little bit? And because I just had them everywhere, and uh, I got married, that, that had a lot to do with it, I think maybe. There and you so, go. Yeah, yeah, I actually sold one of my machine There's guns to buy a answer. ring. You know, I know, right? Oh. Machine guns. Machine gun MP5. Oh. Yeah, that was a very expensive Ouch. ring. What's I but, shot the MP5 for the first time tonight? That's probably when you I used to have them all. I had, awesome. the, I had the PDW like you shot. Oh. I had the SD, the full size regular. I, I had all the. I had all sorts of HKs. I had all wow. sorts of machine guns and stuff. But I started selling them off. I thought, you know, I'm not really shooting much anymore. And sure. and, uh, and I got about halfway through the collection, and I. My, my interest in firearms rekindled. <laughs> You're <laughs> like, what have no. I done? <laughs> what you know? no. Yeah, and I, so there's so many guns, but I think probably the one I kicked myself the most over was, well, there's two. Uh, there was a Galil SAR. It was one of the last ones oh, to come in the country man. with a 16-inch barrel. Yeah. And I, I sold that, and then the other one that really kills me was a uh, was a HK21 belt-fed semi-automatic 308. Wow! Yeah, that uh, very rare. I, I think fade, I sold it. Yeah. I think I sold it for six thousand dollars when I got rid of it. And last time I saw one for sale, they're close to twenty thousand bucks. <laughs> so there's away. two reasons why I miss <laughs> shooting it, and I keep thinking, "Man, you're an idiot." Damn, I gave that away. Yeah. That sucks. And the same thing with the machine guns. You know, you, you buy an M16 back, you know, ten years ago for five thousand dollars, and now you see them selling for ten, yeah, you know, or more. Wow, it's just it's crazy. But yeah, so there's a few. So what do you think about everything? that we've experienced what's the coolest thing that yeah, we've done yeah so this done is the today? first annual uh youtuber get together shoot out here by the uh, iraq vet what do you think about it i think it's awesome but i don't think the neighbors would agree with us <laughs> no have you guys talked about all the stuff that's been going we on have, no, but yeah. i think it's a perfect time this to talk agree. about it since you bring it up one of, since i bring it give, up so give us kind of a the over our listeners the overview of what's happened here all right so with the neighbors. iraq veteran went through all the processes that necessary to get everything approved it turns out since yes. we're on private property no permits are required they, they they went back and forth i guess with the county on this so this is a sanctioned legal event we we're told to go ahead and do it so it's probably the first or second 25-pound charge of Tannerite that got the sheriff out here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the sheriff shows up, and he, he's uh, saying to the neighbor, now there's multiple different stories going around, but uh, as, as they will, uh, but he, he says that one of the neighbors reported seeing a bullet flying through her yard or something. Um, <laughs> and, of course, the Tannerite explosions and stuff like that. So they, they just came out here, I guess, I don't know what for. But um, I don't think they asked us to leave. They just I now there were reports for. of the of the neighbors shooting back at us. There were those yeah. too. Yeah, people were saying was, shooting I guess in the, the cops air. said that it's getting out of hand because the neighbors were shooting back at us. And I did hear some tires screeching, uh, screeching yes. up at the top of the hill and yes. people yelling. After the twenty pound Tannerite explosion, yes, I think there was a major accident. I think oh, that no. was when we had the really loud refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, and, the flying uh, refrigerator, the compressor going bad and uh, exploding on us. So now, now I guess the the neighbors are getting their pitchforks and rallying at the entrance point to the property. <laughs> and they have a sheriff stationed up there. Oh lord! Uh, that trying to trying to run them off, saying what they're doing down there is legal. Yeah. And I don't think he's told them yet that this is going to go till one in the morning. <laughs> so <laughs> I can only imagine we're going to have to sneak out of here because I think we're going to have a hit team out there looking for us. Uh, yeah, more than likely. You got the night vision handy? I didn't bring any, but I'm planning my escape already. So I'm looking at the trees over there. Yeah. Well, this is four wheel drive, so we're we're good. I think there's a gap. You got to know somewhere. where to point it, though. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have to break out our PETA shirts and you know HCI, you know, handgun control incorporated shirts and say, we're, we're here protesting, too. Those crazy people down the hill, they're nuts. And We just pull out and go, we got them, yeah! yeah I, think somebody <laughs> had a, I think I saw somebody had a Biden uh, mask over there. They're getting well, ready for, for Halloween. Are they really? <laughs> <laughs> Can't do they're, that now. No, they're just going to take their double barrel we'll shotgun and shoot it twice We'll just have to put that mask on and lead us out. Yeah, yeah. But that's a bad taste. Remember the rodeo clown with the Obama mask? You know, we could... Uh, we could, we could get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Lose that's our true. jobs or something. No, yeah, I don't think oh. he ever turned up again, did he? No. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! That was a big one. I hope that picked up on the mic. I do too. There's some good booms going yeah, on. We got some good background noise. Well, cool, Tim. Thank you for coming on. Oh, thanks, guys. Well, let's ask, let's ask him this: um, yeah. Is there somebody in the firearm community that you'd like to point out that uh, has done something stupid or boneheaded? Oh, Jack uh, Wagon Train. Jack Wagon That's entrapment. Train. That's entrapment. <laughs> See, I got. I Wait a minute. Does today count? <laughs> well, there's that. Right? So we start from no. the time we were talking about at McDonald's and move forward, or yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's you know I, what I'll say is this: I think that it's important for all of us to keep a level head through all this stuff. You know, we have all these 
I won't say all these, but we've had several shootings that are high profile. Sure. Um, I think that as, as responsible gun owners, we need to, to address those issues very carefully. We need to obviously be vigilant in fighting for our rights, but we have to be very careful, especially those of us in the media, mm -hmm. uh, about what we say. Um, you know, all this this talk of, you know, civil war or whatever else people may be talking about yes. online, I think is, is just outrageous. You know, we need to tone that down. We, you know, we've proven multiple times either at the federal level and at the state level. If you talk, you know, take a look at what's happened in Colorado where they passed that ban. You know, mm -hmm. people spoke out. They, they exercised their right to vote. They yep. ejected a couple of those senators. Yep. Um, and we've been exactly. doing very well at the federal level. People say that things are just getting so bad in the country. I see it kind of going our way. You know, we had that big Heller decision. We had mm -hmm. the McDonald decision. Um, you know, I was carrying my handgun at, at the state park just recently. That's something that's happened actually under the Obama administration. Yeah. I'm not giving him kudos, believe me. It's but, small um, steps. It's small know, steps. It's, it's the small battles that lead to the, exactly. the overall. But victory. you did You're put right. it in the locker before you went into a cave. Yes, I did. I will not step foot on a federal <laughs> <laughs> park and, and not pay attention to the signs. <laughs> well, actually, if they had signs. But anyway. No, yeah. So I, I think that uh, you know, just as, as as a whole, I think we need to be very careful what we say. And I think that you know, we're we're fighting the good fight, and we're we're pushing the ball forward. And I think we're we're going the right direction. And Slow, I think, sure. I think a big yeah. thing that's helped too is the internet, because back when it yeah. got passed in '94, we didn't have YouTube and Facebook no. and Twitter and everything else. Yeah, had had we had the internet like we do today, because of, of course it existed, it just sure. wasn't as popular as it is today. Um, if we would have had the internet like we do today during the, the Clinton administration, 1994. Yeah. That never crime would bill would have never passed. Nope. Never, never would have passed. Because people were ever able to get, even people that aren't gun nuts or gun enthusiasts or whatever you want to call them, they were able to get information, informed mm -hmm. information, and say, okay, well, logically, this makes no sense at all. Right. I don't like guns. I'm not going to go buy a gun. But, hey, this makes sense to not ban these weapons. Right. And that social media kept people talking about it, kept people excited about it, which in turn resulted in people showing up at rallies in their states and their cities and people writing letters to their congressmen and their senators and it was that activity that made those elected officials go hey these yep. guys don't want this stuff it was yep. it was the rapid deployment of of the information to the individuals that yeah and that platform made it happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I remember 1994. So quickly you can get the information out there now. And then, yeah. Senior in high school. I remember well. What I year remember, was it? 94. I graduated in 94. 94. That was when I graduated college. 94. I think I joined AARP in 94. <laughs> <laughs> but You do have more gray than me. 94. I do. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 45. Year. Are you really? Yeah. Wow. 45 or 54, I guess. I wasn't going to call you 45. I, I hide my own maybe Easter early 40s. I know that much. Early 40s is what I was going to call. Huh? Hey. Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. It's been fun. We're going to go shoot some more Did you give your, your channel firearms. plug? Oh, yeah. yeah. So how, how do people go and find you? Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Well, yeah, let's see. Instagram is kind of new to me. I just started doing it. Uh, Twitter is Mac underscore arms. Uh, Twitter is Mac underscore reviews. I'm real consistent in my name. Yes. It's so hard to find a name, especially when you're trying to use Mac. Yeah. And then if you want to find my YouTube channel, which is, uh, you know, my, my, my baby, you can find me at the Military Arms channel. It's just military-arms.com, or you can go to YouTube, and this is uh, where people get kind of confused. Sturmgewehr, plural, has an E on the end, right? <laughs> yes. People go, how do you spell Sturmgewehr? Just search for the Military Arms Channel. Yes. It'll come up the <laughs> first two, three pages. Uh, uh, we'll link you to all my stuff. And also have the uh, the Bank Switch, which is a new blog that we've launched. Oh, nice. Uh, check out the blog. It's thebankswitch.com. Awesome. I will check that out. You know, it's funny because when we first got linked in with 22 Plankster and Hickok 45 and TN Outdoors 9, they would talk about Sturmgewehr and mm -hmm. Tim and Mac and Military Arms Channel. And I thought it was like five different yeah. channels. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and then one day I'm kind of looking <laughs> and I'm like... These people. I subscribed to Military Arms Channel, which is Sturm Gewehr, and he said his name was Tim, and oh my God, it's the same person. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's kind of cool is uh, Google has now allowed me to go from Sturm Gewehr to the Military Arms Channel they, when they yeah. do that Google Plus integration. Uh -huh. So now it is the Military Arms Channel on Google Plus okay, and nice. on, on YouTube, but still the URL says Sturm Gewehr. So uh, figure that one out. Goody. I don't know how they're going to fix that one. But no, they won't. Yeah. Yeah, and yours is the channel top priority. That, I can tell you. All your videos, you have the green and yellow, green stripe, Mac yeah, on red, the side. And, red and yellow, uh, Marine Corps colors. Awesome. Yeah, we well, appreciate it, man. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. You want to go ahead and thank our sponsors? Left uh, hand. Let's let Gabby give uh, a quick plug to her um, Facebook page and website and sure. your book. Yeah. Um, well, guys, you can remember you can follow me on Facebook. You can just type gabbyfranco.com. You can also go. You can also go and get my my website is gabbyfranco.com. Uh, you can get my book Troubleshooting uh, Twitter, which is at 
Gabby Franco TS4, which is for Top Shot Or. And, um, you know, any time that you want to send me a message, I reply as soon as I can, but I always <laughs> do. <laughs> yes, you do. You do. Well, Gabby, thank you so much uh, for being on the show. And we'd like to thank, thank we'd like to thank Firearms Radio Network, firearmsradio.tv, ICE Training, that's ICE Training.us, and US Elite Gear, that's us-elitegear.com for all your kit needs. They sell everything from shoes to watches to backpacks to, to in fact, watches. I bought a uh, Sunto gps watch from them yeah look at that dude yeah. and nice. uh i like that basically you go on there and when you go to check out you enter the code talking lead and you will get a substantial little discount there so us-elitegear.com all or nothing tattoo studios that's all or nothing tattoo.com and their merchandise store which is strangleholdmerch.com holder and green professional real estate services hd press 1-800-615-1840, extension 2222. Take that, Rob. I got it. <laughs> I nailed it. <laughs> Gabby, thanks again for coming on. We had Thank a- you guys for having me. And as always, left hand, keep, keep your elbows close. And keep your arms closer. <laughs> <laughs>